Okay, here we're looking at the simple question, what is light? Keep in mind, when we're relating it to plants, we want to keep in mind whether we're talking about a actual sunlight or if we're looking at artificial light and how that may differ uh, between the two and uh, what spectrums they may give. So first off, we're looking at the electromagnetic spectrum, which is the range of all types of electromagnetic ra radiation. The radiation is energy that travels and spreads out as it travels. And examples of those are radio waves, visible light, which is only a small portion of the full electromagnetic spectrum, UV light, and X-rays and gamma rays also. So again, keep in mind, of this entire range, only a very small portion of that is actually visible light. In the light spectrum, it's many different wavelengths of energy produced by a light source. Now, light is measured in what's called nanometers, and you can think of that as really small meters. Each nanometer represents a wavelength of light or band of energy. What this image or prism tries to show here, we have white light coming in, and we have the um, different colors being separated out. However, if we look closely, and also we see that here, there's different wavelengths. So we can see the red is a much longer wavelength than, say, the indigo or the violet down here, a much shorter wavelength. We see that also down over here also. Keep in mind this light spectrum, this visible light, is only a very small portion of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So this brings the question of, well, what's sunlight? Sunlight, uh, sun gives off infrared, visible, and ultraviolet light. Sunlight is filtered through the Earth's atmosphere and is a combination of that ultraviolet or UV light, visible light, and also infrared radiation, which we interpret as heat. So sunlight has a wide variety of things, more than just what we visibly can see. So what's that visible light? Well, that visible spectrum is the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that's visible to the human eye. A typical human eye will respond to wavelengths from 380 to 740 nanometers. Again, a very small range of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. One thing I do want to point out, as we saw in the previous images, radio waves are still the long waves, but in this case they're on the right-hand side. In some of the other images, they're on the left-hand side. So just keep in mind, you have to be looking at the units when we see um, any sort of uh, spectrum or chart here. Red is kind of that larger wavelengths, and those violets and blues are those shorter wavelengths. That will always remain a constant. Keep in mind, it doesn't mean they're always going to be on the left or the right side. Now, color temperature. This is uh, measured in degrees Kelvin. It's more for us humans than the plants we're trying to grow. So a lot of emphasis is put on the Kelvin temperature chart when looking at interior lighting uh, for lighting up a particular room. Uh, because our eyes have a harder time distinguishing changes at the ends or the blue and red colors of the visible light. Our eyes are actually most sensitive to green or 555 nanometers, give it the highest perceived brightness. These other warm whites, neutrals, or daylights, again, apply more to interior design than it does plants, even though uh, some grow lights will quote the color temperature. It's of little importance to plants.